Götz W. Werner was a distinguished entrepreneur, professor at the University of Karlsruhe, and one of the most influential proponents of an unconditional basic income in Germany in the years from around 2005 to 2018. Even long before that, he advocated on unconditional basic income. But it was not until the beginning of this century that it gained public interest. In 2022, on February 8, at the age of 78, Götz Werner passed away. What made him so influential was, on the one hand, of course, his social position as the head of a very large company. But more than that, he was inspiring because he was completely authentic. What he said was covered by his person and by what really lived in his company. And because what he said had a spiritual, or let's just say, a profoundly human background. He did not moralize. He shared insights from entrepreneurial experience that logically resulted in an unconditional basic income and its financing through value-added tax. What made him special was that he came to the idea of an unconditional basic income for everybody from distinctly entrepreneurial insight, not from idealistic good guy ideas. His longtime advisor Helmut Tenzitov characterized him like this. He pulls the sword out of the stone, means he draws the cutting apt thought which distinguishes the essential from the unessential, the new thought out of the hardened material tangible circumstances. He gets the flash of thought from the matter, the situation. One such flash, such an evidence experience, was that it occurred to him that someone who wants to start at the M Drogerie Markt first needs an income to be able to afford to contribute to the common goals in the company. First you need an income, then you can put in the work. That's the sequence. Work cannot be paid at all, but an income makes it possible. In 1973, he had opened his first store. He had painted the walls and laid the floor himself together with his first employee, Helga Weiss, and was curious to see whether customers would come. Customers did come. And they bought so much that the cash registers ran so hot that they started to smoke. No joke. They had to be replaced with more efficient ones. It was a drugstore. Götz Werner comes from a family of druggists. His father didn't want to hear about his ideas. He kicked him out. Now, in his own store, he implemented the discounter principle, which was still quite new at the time. The company DM Drogeriemarkt, that he built together with the many who worked there, who deliver the goods and shopped there, today has over 2,000 stores and 43,000 employees in Germany alone, is represented in another 12 countries in southern and eastern Europe, has an annual turnover of around 12 billion euros, and a total of 66,000 employees and around 4,000 stores. Even 15 years ago, Götz Werner could say, every day in Germany, one million people come to our stores and experience the M. In 2008, Götz Werner withdraw from operational management and joined the company's supervisory board. He transferred his ownership of the company to a foundation. How does Götz Werner's entrepreneurial social design let beyond the scope of the company into the general society to his commitment to a universal basic income? As the retail chain grew, as more and more stores were added, Götz Werner realized 
that he was no longer getting anywhere with instructions and uniform guidelines on how to act in the stores. He noted that things will only continue if the employees in the stores act in a self-responsible and entrepreneurial manner. After all, they themselves know best what kind of clientele they have, what is in demand in their region, what they need in their branch, how they can best work together. His advisor at that time, Helmut Tensietov, told him, if you want them to be entrepreneurial, you have to give them the tools you have as an entrepreneur. This is how it was consistently carried out. An entire hierarchical level of area managers was abolished. Branches to power. All employees in the stores have insight into the company's figures. They can compare their sales with those of other stores and exchange advices with each other. They have insight into the salary levels of all employees in their branch as well as in other. They can independently commission a craftsman if something needs to be repaired in the store. They can decide for themselves whether to employ anyone else in the store and have a say in what their product range is like. Within a certain frame they can decide and carry out many things at their own discretion. All services provided to them by the corporate headquarters are billed to their branch. This has no influence on their income. But they can see how much value is being created for them in other departments of the corporation and they can decide to use less of it. This increases everyone's awareness of services rendered and claimed by others and it more quickly shows up the pay of internal settlements. So it's not just nice slogans like employees are our capital or people are our focus. Instead they take this seriously. And this is not inconsistent with business improvement. On the contrary, human being is at the center. Would you say this? No, Gutzwerner said. The human being is a goal. Being human is not a state, but a process of development. That's how Gutzwerner sees it. The development of human being is the purpose of all our efforts. The human is not the means of the functioning of the company or whatever else. It is ongoing about the becoming human. For this, everything else is the means. The human being is not a means, but an end. Quote Gutzwerner, An enterprise is a social, artistic, cultural event. The company is a platform for biographies. Gutzwerner saw it this way. Work serves to develop skills. An income is needed by everybody to be able to work. You need an income to live, which means to be able to buy what others make available to you and do for you. First you need an income, then you can take part in society and then show what you can. In a society based on the division of labor, no one can provide for themselves anymore. To live you need an income and you need to trust others to provide what you need. That's the income side. And the corporation side? The company is a platform for developing and contributing one's own abilities to others, is giving the space to discover one's own talents and unfold them, enabling people to find and shape their lives, to experience themselves as capable, and to put one's action in a meaningful context with what others need. When the customer buys, he pays for what will be in the store tomorrow. Payments are always directed into the future. These insights were the result of his entrepreneurial activity, not detached ideals. His leadership principle was suction instead of pressure. Sog statt Druck in German. Creating conditions, opening spaces 
that interest others, where they want to get involved in what they see as a task, a goal they want to connect with, a challenge for themselves in which they see meaning and in which they themselves occur. Quote Gott Werner, Leadership is only legitimate if it is leadership for the self-leadership of the other. Otherwise, leadership is manipulation and prevents the other person. The apprentices in the company are called learners because they learn themselves. They can figure out for themselves how to do the job best in their own way. They can try things out and make mistakes. Quote Götz Werner, Leading today can only mean leading consciousness. And consciousness is led with questions, not with answers, but by evoking questions. So that means not by giving directives, but by awakening initiative. In the initiative, human appears as I, human. Quote Götz Werner, I'm not a director, I'm an evoker. With answers, the inner self falls asleep. With questions, the inner self wakes up. With questions, it becomes active. With answers, you are satisfied and does not think for yourself. Trust is good, control is better. Lenin is said to have said this sentence. Götz Werner, quote, When you look at this statement in the light, it can only mean trust for me, control for you. How do you want to establish a community, a development community, where people find their path in life if you say trust for me, control for you? Impossible. Don't we live by giving trust to the other? Trust is good, control is better. Many see it that way. Götz Werner also started out that way. But the bigger the company, the more elaborate and impossible the control became. And people never become self-reliant that way. Confidence ennobles man. Eternal guardianship inhibits his maturation. The Baron von Stein said, and that's what Götz Werner said. People are determined stimulus response creatures. That is the view of many today, and that leads to transhumanism. You can technically improve them. Is the human being a stimulus response creature? No, after Götz Werner, he himself is a developmental being. A giraffe dies as a giraffe it was born as, Götz Werner liked to claim. But a human being evolves in his life and changes. A person does not die as a person he was born as. Everyone is an entrepreneur, Götz Werner proclaimed, in so far as everyone undertakes his or her life, shapes his life. And Götz Werner liked to add, believe me, this undertaking is guaranteed to end deadly. It was important to Götz Werner to see the other person as a human being just as he is himself and to concede to the other person what he conceded to himself. Götz Werner took these insights seriously and implemented them. If division of labor, then collaboration. If collaboration, then everyone is equally important to achieving the common goal. If everyone is equally important, then equal eye level. To know why was more important to Götz Werner than to know how. The why is followed by the how. Of course, you need to know how, but important and more important is to know why. The why is a basis for the how. The why is a question of meaning. Why do we sell toothpaste at the M Drogerie Markt? This question was given as a theme in a seminar for which the management of the M Drogerie Markt had to think about and to write something. They sought up the most amazing things. Why do we sell toothpaste? 
On the last day of the seminar, Götz Werner came in, saw the fancy stuff they had written and said, well, we are selling toothpaste because that's all I learned. Where it became idealistic, Götz Werner broke that by saying something very honest, simply practical. But if you ask him a question for which you expected a simple, practical and functionally business answer, you would get an answer from him that opened up a space of humanity and awareness that went far beyond the expected. Liberty, equality, fraternity. Taken seriously everywhere in life, we are guiding stars for him. Everything that was done was measured according to these. Whereby the way there is not always the straight way. Goetzmann also called the three values this way. Freedom, equality, basic income. If you don't have a dream, you don't have a future, Goetzwerner stated. That applies to society as well as to our own lives. Goetzwerner's entrepreneurial attitude was to give confidence to the other. As a result, many in the company have risen above themselves. But sometimes that has gone wrong. People were trusted who used this in a negative way and proved to be destructive for the company. They were then dismissed, but that didn't stop Götz Werner from giving confidence always again. Because the main point was not that this always produced positive results, but that this is the way to deal with people, because people are developmenting beings. And that means, in their very own and perhaps not at all pleasing way, different than me, but equal with me as a human being. This was not superficially about morality, not a nice ideology or a means to the end of commercial success, but about cognition. Cognition of the human being. The human being is not the means, but the end of the undertakings. Income enables work, work is human development, working time is time of your life, and not an antithesis of life. Quote, the economy has a task of freeing people from labor. Freeing to leisure freeing to their self-determined meaningful activity in which they see necessity. In the world based on the division of labor, in external supply, we always work for others, not for ourselves, and we always have to trust that others too work for us. We live from the initiative of others. So it's only good for me if as many others as possible can take action, can take the initiative. Initiative enhancing framework, that was what Götz Werner was all about in the company. But that's just as true for society as a whole. The fact that Götz Werner was in favor for an unconditional basic income is no kindness. It is not the benevolence of a rich company owner who wants to do something good in the evening of his life. It is only a consequence of his findings. Among these findings was that a price for something, for a good, a product, a service, dissolves completely into income once you follow the path the money takes from paying a price. It is not the thing, the refrigerator, the bus ticket, the potato, that takes the money needs the money, that costs money. But what it costs are income shares of all those who have contributed to the creation and provision of the product or service for the consumer. This includes income shares in the prices of those employed or contracted by the public sector, by the state. For their income, public sector, the taxes are levied. And these taxes are also paid for in the price of a product or service ultimately by the end consumer. The money that pays the taxes and charges 
comes out of what consumers pay as a price for the final product. It comes from what consumers spend. The consumer bears the tax even if it is let, later deducted from earned income or business profits or beforehand levied on certain rough materials. In the price, the consumer bears the share that goes to the state as tax. These are discoveries of Götz Werner, not his intentions. His intention was to make this known and to draw the consequences. Unconditional basic income, because it frees up people's initiative, enabling the creative power of work. In the initiative, the human being appears as an I am, an entity that develops and recognizes itself. Value-added tax, so that the tax is not only born in prices, but also levied there, so that the creative power of capital is not hindered. Capital here meant as a force configuring the cooperation and interaction of all components of the company, which is expressed in equity. Equity, Eigenkapital in German, is, according to Götz Werner, the figure on the balance sheet that indicates the creative power of the enterprise. The figure refers to nothing visible, nothing material, no monetary item in the company. It indicates the creative power of the company. With the consumption tax, this creative power remains unhindered. With the consumption tax, it is not the service provider who pays the tax, but the service recipient. Value-added tax and unconditional basic income were the two sides of a medal that Götz Werner saw as progress. And the two fit together. The basic income is levied as a tax component in all prices and paid at the end of value creation. When work has become value, when the goal of value creation has been reached, when the consumer buys. Also today, everyone's basic income is included in a share in today's prices. Because, as already said, spending money for a price is paying the income of other, including the basic income component in all current earned income in both the private and public sector and in the existing state transfer income. With the introduction of a universal basic income, a UBI, the basic income amount for all will be in the price as well, same like today, but as a tax share. The basic income amount, this level of income, that today is a proportion in the income, then levied as a tax and transferred separately as UBI to everybody, may make that this basic income amount disappear in all earned income and transfer income. How high earned incomes are if everyone already has the amount of the basic income unconditionally will be a matter of negotiation in the labor market. To the extent that the basic income portion disappears in other income, the tax for financing basic income does not rise prices and the decline in labor income do not reduce total income. The point is not more money, not more money for all, but that the basic income should become unconditional for all. It is already financed, Götz Werner emphasized. We have enough services and goods for everybody, and we could produce even more. Everything that can be produced can also be financed, provided we have the goodwill to do so, Götz Werner liked to quote the economist Oswald von Nelbreuning. Götz Werner was concerned with this out of insight into the necessity of these measures for the progress of people and mankind.